أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا وحبيب قلوبنا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين صلى الله عليك يا سيدي ويا مولاي يا رسول الله صلى الله عليك يا سيدي ويا مولاي يا أبا عبد الله يا رحمة الله الواسعة ويا باب نجاة الأمة ويا عبرة كل مؤمن ومؤمنة يا ليتنا كنا معكم سادتي فنفوز فوزا عظيما قال الله تعالى في محكم كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولنبلونكم بشيء من الخوف والجوع ونقص من الأموال والأنفس والثمرات وبشر الصابرين الذين إذا أصابتهم مصيبة قالوا إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون أولئك عليهم صلوات من ربهم ورحمة وأولئك هم المهتدون Respected brothers and sisters, illuminate your hearts and your minds with the remembrance of Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. A second one for the love of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. A third loud one for the love of Abdullah al Radi alayhi salam. I would like to send my condolences to the family of Brother Sarmad Hussain, the one who passed away in a tragic way last night. They were on their way. They were on their way coming to the Majlis of Ab Aba Abdullah al Hussain. We ask Allah to grant them the shafa'ah of Imam al Hussein. We ask Allah to bless them and to bless their souls and to grant their family patience. And then before, congrat before I send my condolences, I would like to congratulate them indeed. Because right now, Brother Sarmad Hussein, he is with his master Hussein, inshaAllah. He was coming towards the majlis of Imam al Hussein. He could have went to anywhere else, but he chose to come to the masjid to remember Imam al Hussein alayhi salam on these great nights. We ask Allah to bless his soul. We ask Allah to grant his family patience, inshaAllah, with a loud salawat upon Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad.
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, ثُمَّ كَانَ عَاقِبَةُ الَّذِينَ أَسَاءُوا السُّوءَ أَنْ كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا وَكَانُوا يَسْتَهْزِئُونَ my dear brothers and sisters, every single year during the seasons of Muharram, Safar, Arba'in, Ashura, you find Muslim extremists, unfortunately, spreading controversy, arguments and questions regarding our belief towards the Ahlul Bayt, regarding our love to Ahlul Bayt, السلام, regarding our ziyara to the shrine of Imam al Hussein, our walk towards the shrine of Imam al Hussein, Every single year, the clock, is, uh, the clock is ticking and they have to spread those false information and accusation and questioning and controversy. Unfortunately, they're Muslims, yet they cannot handle the Shia of Imam al Hussein visiting their master, Sayyid al-Shuhada Abi Abdullah. So, some of them would say, why would you continue on the commemoration of Imam al Hussein? Why do you continue celebrating the Aza of Sayyid al Shuhada? They say Imam al Hussein was killed 1383 years ago. Khalas, get over it, move on. Why do you have to keep on continue remembering Hussein, Hussein, Hussein? This was over a thousand years ago, almost 1400 years ago. What's so special about him? Why do you keep on remember him, remembering him? Another thing they may say, they say, why do you exaggerate in your love towards Sayyidu Shahada? Every single year, Muharram, 10 nights you have to spend in remembrance of Imam al Hussein. Every single Arba'in, you go to Najaf, you walk two, three days just to get to the shrine of Sayyid al-Shuhada. Isn't that an exaggeration? You come to the masjid, you beat your chest, you cry just for Imam al Hussein, the grandson of the Prophet? You do not do that with the Prophet himself. Or they call us grave worshippers. We go visit the shrine of Imam al Hussein. we just say simply, Assalamu alayka ya Aba Abdullah wa ala al-arwah allati hallat bi fanaik. We are called grave worshippers. Simply sending our salutations and our salam and our, our gratitude towards the shrine of Sayyid al-Shuhada, we are called mushrik and we are called kuffar. Or they say, why not commemorate the martyrdom of the second Imam? Why is it always about Imam al Hussein, Imam al Hassan? You don't commemorate his martyrdom? We tell him, of course we do commemorate his martyrdom. Of course we do. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, their questioning and their controversy and their arguments are not new. Absolutely not new. They keep on doing it every single year, every single month. Subhanallah, you go to Hajj, right after Hajj, they keep on spreading letters to avoid grave worshipping. They know after Hajj, Muharram starts and people want to visit the shrine of Sayyid al-Shahada Abi Abdullah al what, what do they have against Imam al Hussein alayhi salam? Before responding and debating, we need to come to this turning point. Before we sit and debate with them and discuss everything that they accuse us for and question us for, we have to come to this turning point between us and them. This point will determine whether we are kuffar or they are kuffar. We are mushrik or they are mushrik. And this point is which Lord do you worship? When we want to sit and debate, we are the people of debate. The madhab of Ahl al-Bayt. The school, the school thought of Ahl al-Bayt We will debate. We are the people of reason. We have the burhan, we have the evidence. They want to sit and debate? Of course, we will debate. But we want to ask them, which Lord do you worship? Those who accuse us for commemorating the Musab of, the Musab of Abi Abdullah al Hussein, we ask them, which Lord do you even worship? Do you worship the Lord that has big hands? Do you worship the Lord that has giant legs? Just like Abu Huraira says. 
Abu Huraira, this is not from me. In Sahih al-Bukhari, go and find hadith number 4850. Right now, you can search it up. Look it up. 4850. Hadith number 4, 4850. It is in Sahih al-Bukhari. Narrated, Warawah Abu Huraira. Abu Huraira is the narrator, mashaAllah. What does he say? He say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps on putting the enemies of the enemies of the Quran, the enemies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the kuffar, the mushrikeen in hell, and hell fire. It keeps on accepting more and more and more and more. So hell says, Hell min mazid, can I get more? I'm not full yet. I want more and more. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts his leg. This is what Abu Huraira said. Allah puts his leg. Hell min mazid. Allah puts his leg in the hell. Until hell says, Qattin qat. I am full now. This is the deen. This is the turning point. You want to accuse us for visiting Imam al Hussein, Call us grave worshippers? Look at the Lord that you worship. Those who accuse us. Go read your own books. Isn't it, isn't it a shame? That we don't, you do not read your own books and see what your scholars say? Worshipping a Lord that has hands, giant hands and a leg and sitting on a throne, that is your Lord? Or another hadith that is written, the same hadith is narrated in Sahih Muslim, Anas ibn Malik, hadith number 2846. This is their belief, Imam. Ja'far al-Sadiq, sallu alayhi bi ala aswatikum. Three men come to him, he asks them, which Lord do you worship? Tell me which God do you follow, which God do you worship? One of them tells him, the first one tells him, A'budu Rabban la sifata lah. A second one tells him, A'budu Rabban lahu sifat Al Mahsusa. And the third one tells him, A'budu Rabban la yuhassu, wa la yujassu, wa la yulmasu, wa la yuhassu bil hawas al khams. The first one tells him, Who do you worship? Imam al Sadiq is asking them, Who do you worship? He tells him, I, I worship a Lord that doesn't have any sifat, that doesn't have any senses. You cannot feel him. He doesn't have any qualities, no characteristics. Khalas, nothing. Imam Sadiq tells him, Anta ta'budu al-adam. And you worship nothing. It seems like you're worshiping no one. Nothing. Because no qualities, nothing. La sifat. The second one, he said, A'budu rabban lahu sifatun mahsusa. Imam Sadiq tells, he tells the Imam, I worship a Lord that has sifat mahsusa, has senses, has body parts, has eyes, has nose, has ear and Imam Sadiq tells him وَأَنْتَ تَعْبُدُ الصَّنَمْ and you worship an idol a lord that has a head feelings you worship an idol number three he said أَعْبُدُ رَبًّا لَا يُحَسُّ وَلَا يُجَسُّ وَلَا يُعْرَفُ بِالْحَوَاسِ الْخَمْسِ I believe I worship in a Lord that I cannot touch him. I cannot smell him. I cannot hear him in my five senses. Imam Sadiq tells him, Anta ta'budu rabba al-hilli wal-haram. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. He tells him, you are the one that lives in, that believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You worship Allah. The Lord of the universe. So my dear brothers and sisters, if the debate, if the discussion between us and them, those who accuse us for visiting the shrine of Sayyidu Shahada, commemorating the Musab of Sayyidu Shahada, doing Latoman Aza for Sayyidu Shahada, beating our chest, crying for Imam al Hussein, if the debate between them, between us and them, is based on intellectual information, based on logic, based on honor and respect, 
We are the people of debate. We are the people of discussion. We have Ja'far bin Muhammad al-Sadiq alayhi salam. We have Muhammad al-Baqir. We have Zain al-Abideen. We have Ali al-Rida. We have our leaders. They are the ones who taught, at, taught us how to discuss and how to debate. So our, so the problem that if it's based on intellectual and intellectual information and based on knowledge and logic. But unfortunately, it is not based on intellectual and logic. It is based on hate. After the debate, after the discussion, you see their scholars, they give, a, give out a fatwa and that fatwa turns into a allowing to shed blood. This is what's happening, my dear brothers and sisters. That fatwa turns into killing people. That turns into ISIS. This is the thing. This is unfortunate, my dear brothers and sisters. Sallu ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. My dear brothers and sisters, our first response to them. They tell, they tell us why is Ashura important? We'll tell them why. The day of Ashura is one of the days of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The day that haq was determined and batil was determined. Iman was determined and kufr was determined. Islam was determined and specialized and kufr. And disbelief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala against Iman was determined as well. You find in the day of Ashura, on the day of Ashura, Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, his screaming tells the people, Ala wa inna da'i ibn da'i, qad rakaza bayna thnatayn, bayna sillati wa dhilla, wa hayhat minna dhilla. Imam al Hussein clearly says Yazid wants to take my allegiance. He wants to keep me in a life where my dignity is stepped on, where my honor is stepped on with humiliation. Absolutely not. We learn this from Imam al Hussein. Life with humiliation is worse than death with honor and dignity. This is the first lesson that we learn from the battle of Karbala between Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. On the day of Ashura, Salah was protected. On the day of Ashura, Siyam and fasting was protected. On the day of Ashura, Hajj and the Kaaba was protected. On the day of Ashura, everything about Islam, the Holy Quran was protected. Yazid clearly was a kafir. Yazid was clearly a person that was against Prophet Muhammad. A person that was against Ali ibn Abi Talib. He used to sit on the member of the Prophet, drink alcohol and wine on the member of Rasulullah. He used to sit on the member of the Prophet, on the pulpit of the Prophet, and cusses Ali ibn Abi Talib, cusses Fatima al Zahra. This is the Khalifa of Rasulullah. This is their Khalifa. On the day of Ashura, Imam al Hussein refused to give allegiance to a man like Yazid. And a man like me will never give allegiance to a man like him. Imam al Hussein didn't just save Islam. Imam al Hussein didn't just save his family. He saved Islam. And he didn't just save Islam, he saved humanity. Imam al Hussein taught people that don't just look at Islam as if Islam is ISIS, Islam of oppressing the females and oppressing the Muslims, the, the people in Yemen. The people in Afghanistan, the people in Iraq, the people in Lebanon. He taught us a lesson and he taught humanity a lesson that in Islam there is a school thought that learns lessons from Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. On the day of Ashura, Imam al Hussein was screaming. They tell him, Khalas, give bay'ah to Yazid, pledge your allegiance to Yazid. Save yourself. Stop killing your family. Stop killing your people. You're causing all of this. 
Imam Al Hussein used to swear by Allah. He used to say, "Wallah, la a'tiyakum biyadi a'ta al dalil, wala afir firar al abid." By Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, I will never give allegiance to Yazid. I will never humiliate myself, and I will never run away. You want to kill me? Yes, come, we'll fight. This is Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam, and we will keep on remembering him until they die, insha Allah. Let them die in anger. We will never let go of Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam. The screaming of Imam Al Hussein until now is alive. Hayhat min dhilla until now is alive. We must learn the lessons from Sayyid al Shahada alayhi salam. Fears, the screams of, the screaming of Hayhat min dhilla, and the screaming of no. To humility until now is alive and oppressors and the tyrants fear this call. And they fear the name of Hussein ibn Ali ibn Abi Talib. Now, because of those screams, my dear brothers and sisters, our religion is saved. They tell us why the focus on Imam al Hussein? Because, because of Imam al Hussein, our religion is saved. Because of Imam al Hussein, we are still coming to the masjid and praying. Because of Imam al Hussein, our children are, are Muslims. Because of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam and his calls, no to humility, we are still religious, fasting, praying. All of this thanks to Sayyid al Shahada Abi Abdullah al Hussein. Sallu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. We must know, we must know, what did Imam al Hussein sacrifice? What did he do? Imam al Hussein changed and diverted and kept Islam on the right path. Yazid wanted to divert it. Imam al Hussein kept it on the straight path. Yazid clearly wanted to kill the Adhan, wanted to kill the Salat, wanted to kill the Qur'an, kill Islam, kill every religious person. Imam al Hussein kept that alive. Yes, he lost his life. Yes, he lost his brother Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas. Yes, he lost his son Ali al-Akbar. Yes, he lost his companions. Not just that, he lost his son Ali al-Azghar Abdullah al -Rawi. But with that, he saved Islam. إِنْ كَانَ دِينُ مُحَمَّدٍ لَمْ يَسْتَقِمْ إِلَّا بِقَتْلِي فَيَا سُيُوفْ خُذِينِي Imam al Hussein, his words, his screams, if the religion of Muhammad will die because of me, if I pledge allegiance and refuse to fight, then let the swords take me. خلاص, I don't want a life like this. If I'm going to be the cause, that Islam will be diverted and Yazid takes power. We have to know for what price we are living. Right now, Muslims coming to the masjid, we have to know. We have to know because of those pure blood of Sayyid al-Shuhada, Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas, Ali al-Akbar, the companions of Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam, Zuhair ibn al-Qain, Habib ibn Mudahir, because of those people, our religion is alive. Yes, on the day of Ghadir, Islam was complete. Prophet Muhammad completed his mission, but there was need for someone to protect it, to carry it on. Yazid wanted to take it on. Yazid wanted to, to take it on. Imam al Hussein refused. Imam al Hussein said no to humility. And we learned this lesson from Sayyid al Shahada. Abi Abdullah al Hussein. Sallu ala Muhammadan wa Ali Muhammad. We didn't forget him and we will never forget Sayyid al Shahada. Never. Kill us, do everything to us, whatever you think you can do, you will never remove the name of Imam al Hussein from our hearts. Every single year, ten nights, three nights, one night, at least there will be a remember for Imam al Hussein. There will be a reminder to people that come to the majlis of Sayyid al Shahada. Shed some tears for the love of Sayyid al Shahada Abi Abdullah al Hussein. 
day after day, we see that clearly in front of us. The zawar of Imam al Hussein, day after day, they're getting more and more and more. Masha Allah. Masha Allah. Right now, the, the zawar of Imam al Hussein, the visitors of Imam al Hussein, millions. The one of the largest gatherings in the world in the world. In Hajj, you wouldn't even find 15 to 20 million people. To Imam al Hussein they come and they pledge their allegiance by calling Labbaik Ya Hussein. And now everyone with me ten times Labbaik Ya Hussein. Labbaik Ya Hussein. Labbaik Ya Hussein. Labbaik Ya Hussein. لبيك يا حسين لبيك يا حسين لبيك يا حسين Of course our master we will always cry for you we will always mourn your martyrdom your companions martyrdom we will never forget you ya aba abdullah your love is in our hearts and we will give that love to our children and their children inshallah until the day of judgment we will never forget you ya sayyidi wa ya mawlai now, issue number two, when they come and they tell you, why the visitation? Why the visitation of Imam al Hussein? Why the emphasis on doing the ziyarah of Imam al Hussein, my dear brothers and sisters? Why? Why is there so much importance in doing the ziyarah of Sayyid al Shahada, visiting the grave of the grandson of Muhammad? Sallu alayhi bi ala aswatika. Brothers and sisters, the ziyarah of Sayyid al-Shuhada isn't just something because we like and we want to do. It's in our blood. It's in our heart. Our parents, our grandparents, they passed it on to us and we will pass it generation after generation. The ziyarah of Imam al Hussein will continue inshallah until the day of judgment. It never stopped. You find throughout history, Multiple, multiple khulafa and tyrants, they tried to remove the name of Imam al Hussein by destroying the shrine, the shrine of Sayyid al Shahada. Did, were they successful in that? Did they accomplish their mission? Absolutely not. One Khalifa Abbasi, one Abbasid emperor, destroyed the shrine of Sayyid al Shahada six times, and some say over six times. Al Mutawakkil al Abbasi. Was he successful in that? Right now, look at the zawar of Sayyid al-Shahda. And where is the shrine of, where is the grave of al-Mutawakkil? Look at the shrine of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. Millions upon millions of people every single day, day after day. The zawar of Abi Abdullah, the number is getting bigger and bigger, inshallah. Now, it's not just the Mutawakkil. Multiple historians have suggested that the shrine of Abi Abdullah was demolished over 16 times. They come, they destroy it, they put it down to earth, the shrine of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. Now look at the shrine of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. Look at the golden dome of Sayyid al Shahada Abi Abdullah al Hussein. Untouchable. Imam al Hussein, right now, my dear brothers and sisters, and from day one, was a superpower. Wallah al Ali al Azim. He was a superpower. Untouchable. No matter what the tyrants did, no matter what the tyrants tried to do, destroy the shrine of Sayyid al Shahada, Imam al Hussein's love is still in the heart of people. It's still in the heart of Christians, not just Shia. It's in the heart of Jews, not just Muslims. This is Imam al Hussein, my dear brothers and sisters. Many of us know Hussein Kamil Al Majid. This person is the son in law of Saddam. Those Iraqis here will know what I'm talking about. The son in law of Saddam. He went to the shrine of Abi Abdullah Al Hussein and he said, Ana Hussein went Hussein. I am Hussein and you are Hussein. But let's see who's more powerful. What happened to Hussein Kamil? What happened? in the garbage of history. Look how Allah humiliates the people who try to remove 
any sign of Sayyid al-Shuhda Abi Abdullah al Hussein. Allah says in the Holy Quran, يُرِيدُونَ لِيُطْفِئُوا نُورَ اللَّهِ بِأَفْوَاهِهِمْ وَاللَّهُ مُتِمُّ نُورِهِ وَلَوْ كَرِهَ الْكَافِرُونَ And Allah calls, him, calls them kafirun. Imam al Hussein is one of the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. نُورُ اللَّهِ فِي ظُلُمَاتِ الْأَرْضِ The sign of God in this earth. We must learn this lesson, my dear brothers and sisters. If you have the chance, if you have the opportunity to visit Sayyid al-Shuhada, go. Go. Now is the time, the perfect time. If you have the ability and the opportunity and the chance, go right now, whenever you can. Today, better than tomorrow. Tomorrow, better than the future. Do not delay the ziyarah of Abi Abdullah. اللهم ارزقنا في الدنيا زيارة الحسين وفي الآخرة شفاعة الحسين يا الله. The emphasis on the ziyara of Imam Al Hussein is not just because the tyrants try and Allah shows it alone. No, you find the ziyara of Imam Al Hussein. Prophet Muhammad mentioned it. Imam Al Sadiq mentions it thousands of times. Imam Al Rida mentions it. Imam Al Jawad. Imam Al Kazim. All of them, their companions come to them. They tell them, we are going to Karbala. Imam al-Sadiq tells them, Imam al-Rida tells them, Imam al-Kadhim tells them, give salam to my grandfather, Hussein. It was a time where it was not safe, no security in Iraq to go to visit Imam al-Hussein. Yet, however you find the Imams, still go, whether it's safe or not safe. There was a man, I don't know how long time ago, how many years ago? He went to the shrine of Imam al Hussein and there was a punishment for those who visit Imam al Hussein. You want to visit Imam al Hussein? Yeah, you got a sacrifice. What was that sacrifice? You get your arms chopped off. You get your arms severed, severed. And preferably they wanted to cut the right arm. One man goes to the shrine of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. They're standing, the guards are standing, armed, in front of the shrine of Abi Abdullah. Yes, you want to enter the shrine? You have to give us your hand. He points to his left hand. He tells them, take this left hand. They tell him, no, give your right. He tells them, I don't have my right. Last year I came to Abi Abdullah al Hussein and you took my right arm. Those believers, those are the people that know the Worth of Ziyarat Abi Abdullah al Hussein, the Ziyarat of Abi Abdullah. You think the Zawar of Abi Abdullah are normal people? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Imam al Sadiq alayhi salam praises the Zawar of Abi Abdullah al Hussein multiple times. What's so special? They're just going visiting a grave, as they say, as they accuse us, grave worshippers, visiting. The shrine of their master, Imam al Hussein. A Sahih hadith, an authentic, an authentic hadith by Mawlana al Imam al Sadiq, where he says, Ma min nabiyin mursal, wala min malakin muqarrab, illa wa yatamanna ala Allah an yadana lahu fi ziyarati qabri abi Abdullah al Hussein. Sallu ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Every single messenger, every single prophet, and every single angel, Malakin, Muqarrab, close to Allah, Jibra'il, Mika'il, Israfil, Israel, and the prophets, Adam, Nuh, Isa, Musa, all of them beg Allah, Yatamanna ala Allah. Why? To allow them to visit the shrine of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. The Zawar of Imam al Hussein. They're unique individuals. Another hadith by Abdullah bin Zurara. Zurara, this famous scholar that always narrates the hadith of Imam al-Sadiq. His son, Abdullah, says, سَمِعْتُ أَبَا عَبْدِ Aba Abdullah means Imam al-Sadiq. سَمِعْتُ أَبَا عَبْدِ اللَّهِ يَقُولْ إِنَّ لِزُوَّارِ الْحُسَيْنِ بْنِ عَلِيٍّ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ فَضْلًا عَلَى النَّاسِ this guy, Abdullah bin Zurara, says, I heard my Imam al-Sadiq 
saying that the zawar of Qabr Abi Abdullah, the zawar of the grave of Imam al Hussein, the shrine of Imam al Hussein, they are more important and they are prioritized over the rest of people on the day of judgment. So Abdullah bin Zurara looks at the Imam and he tells him, Wama fadluhum? Why are they prioritized? Why are they more important? What's so special about them? Imam al-Sadiq says, قَالَ يَدْخُلُونَ الْجَنَّةَ قَبْلَ النَّاسِ بِأَرْبَعِينَ عَامًا وَسَائِرُ النَّاسِ فِي الْحِسَابِ وَالْمَوْقِفِ On the day of judgment, the day that will last 50,000 years according to the Qur'an, the zawar of Abi Abdullah al Hussein will enter heaven 40 years before the rest of the people. This is not my words, my dear brothers and sisters. Not because we want to mention Imam al Hussein so much, and not just because of our love. This is clearly Imam al Sadiq, a pure, infallible Imam, a holy figure, the grandson of Muhammad, mentioning. That the zawar, the visitors of the shrine of Abi Abdullah al Hussein, are greater than the rest of the people. Sallu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. The Prophet himself, in an authentic hadith, says those that visit my grandson Hussein, at the moment of death, I will come and visit them. And on the day of judgment, I will come to them. The day Yawmul Hasra, the day that we have to wait 50,000 years. We're sweating. We're standing in line to face the judgment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah comes to them and visits them and comforts them at that moment. Don't think that the ziyarah of Imam al Hussein is as if you're going visiting the grave of another person. Of a random person and reciting Al Fatiha, that's it. The ziyarah of Imam Al Hussein, my dear brothers and sisters, determines Iman from non Iman. The ziyarah of Imam Al Hussein is one of Alamat Al Mu'min, one of the qualities of a Mu'min. Imam Al Hassan Al Askari says, Alamat Al Mu'min Khams, one of them is Ziyarat Al Arba'een, the ziyarah of Imam Al Hussein on his 40th. Inshallah, we all plan to go this Arba'een. At least have the intention so that Allah grants you the ziyara of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. Allahumma rzuqna fi dunya ziyaratah wa fil akhirati shafa'atah. Now, I want to talk about Arba'een. In Arba'een, wherever you want to go in the world, you have to plan the trip, book the ticket, and you have to book a hotel. Pro think about the money that you will spend. It's going to turn out a lot. The only place on earth you go in Arba'een when you visit the shrine of Imam Hussein, you just have to worry about your ticket and that's it. That's it. You get there. Do you need a hotel? Absolutely not. There is tents for the zawar of Imam Hussein. The people in Iraq, the people who have been to Arba'een, they know what I'm talking about. You walk towards the shrine of Imam al Hussein. You want to have dinner. You you end up having dinner seven, eight times. Free food, everything for free. Air, AC, air conditioning, everything is prepared and provided for the zawar of Imam al Hussein. Hajj, Hajj, Hajj is wajib. When you want to go to Hajj, you have to prepare a budget, twelve, fifteen thousand dollars. Hotels and everything, and Hajj is wajib, you can't do anything. The ziyarah of Imam al Hussein, book the ticket, and you will get there. Free everything, free of charge. Another hadith by Imam al Sadiq says the zawar of Imam al Hussein, from, they leave the, from the moment that they leave their house until they get to the shrine of Imam al Hussein. And until they get back to their homes, there is a there is a malik, an angel, and another, and more than one angel, just walking to them, praying to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to protect them and to forgive all of their sins. Kayomin waladathu umma, as if he was still, as if he was just born. 
you never find it in anything else other than the ziyarah of Imam al-Hussein. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, they say, why the emphasis of Imam al-Hussein? Tell them, you find Eid al-Adha, you have a specific ziyarah, not to the Prophet, to Imam al-Hussein. You have a specific ziyarah in Eid al-Fitr, just for Imam al-Hussein. On the eve of Sha'ban, on the eve of the, on the eve of mid of Sha'ban, there is a specific ziyarah of Imam al-Hussein. Eve of Raj, mid of Rajab, ziyarah of Imam al-Hussein. Fifteenth of Ramadan, ziyarah of Imam al-Hussein. Day of Ashura, ziyarah of Imam al-Hussein. First night of Rajab, Sha'ban, Ramadan, all of it, the ziyarah of Imam al-Hussein. What's so special about Imam al-Hussein? Why is the emphasis on Imam al-Hussein? Because without Imam al-Hussein, there will be no Eid al-Adha. Without Imam al-Hussein, there will be no Hajj. Without the sacrifice of Imam al-Hussein, there will be no Ramadan. There will be no fasting. This is Imam al-Hussein to us, my dear brothers and sisters. When they question us, why Imam al-Hussein? Why the emphasis of, of Imam al-Hussein? Let us ask him. Let us ask them, which Lord do you believe? Just like I mentioned in the beginning. It all goes back to Allah. It all goes back to the first pillar in Islam, Tawheed. This is very important, my dear brothers and sisters. Problem number three. They call us grave worshippers. Go visit the shrine of Imam al-Hussein. Mushrik, Ubad al-Qubur. When we go to Hajj, once I was in Hajj, and just simply saying, Assalamu alaikum ya Rasulullah. One of the cops, they come to us, me, my father, and they say, La tushrik, do not do shirk, do not be a polytheist. How am I being a polytheist? Just simply saying, Assalamu alaikum ya Rasulullah, you're doing shirk. These are the accusations that they say upon us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, وَلَا تَقُولُوا لِمَنْ يُقْتَلُ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَاتٌ بَلْ أَحْيَاءٌ وَلَكِنْ لَا تَشْعُرُونَ Do not call those who are killed فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ on the path of Allah, on the way to sacrifice in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do not call them dead. Do not call them amwat, dead. Bal ahya. What does ahya mean in Arabi? They're alive. They're still here. They watch you. They listen to you. Imam al Hussein sees what we're doing, sees our a'mal, our deeds. He sees when we go and pray to them. He hears our call, Labbaika ya Hussein. He hears our call, Assalamu alaikum ya Aba Abdullah. Do not call him dead. Imam al Hussein is alive and is watching you and hearing you and listening to you. And he feels what we're doing. He knows what we're doing. So let us work and work and become hard workers fi sabil Allah on the path of Allah to please our master, Abi Abdullah al Hussein. Because if it wasn't for the blood of Sayyid al-Shuhada, right now, khalas, we're atheist. Without the blood of that was shed on the day of Ashura, we were worthless right now. We were just like, we would be just like Qawm al-Jahiliya, the people before Islam. Ignorant people kill each other, drink alcohol, shed blood, and bury our daughters while they are alive. This was Jahiliyyah before Islam. حَتَّى بَعَثَهُمْ بَعَثَ اللَّهِ أَبِيك حَتَّى بَعَثَ اللَّهِ فِيكُمْ أَبِي مُحَمَّدْ فاطمة الزهراء says. صلوا عليه في على أصوات. So my dear brothers and sisters, let us not take Imam al-Husayn and let us not consider Imam al Hussein just a normal, random person, especially when we go and visit his grave. When we come to the majalis of Abi Abdullah al Hussein, let us know who are we commemorating. Khalas, just come to the masjid, cry a little, and that's it. 
let us learn. Without him, no Islam. No Islam, clearly. Yazid used to say, Layta ashyakhi bi bedrin shahidu jaza'al khajraj min waq'il asal la ahallu wa stahallu faraha thumma qalu ya Yazidu la tushal qad qatalna al-qirma min zadatihim wa adalnahu bi bedrin fa'tadal Yazid, mashallah, a very good poet. He used to say, I wish my descendants those who were killed in Badr, I wish they can see what I have accomplished. Who was killed in Badr? Who was murdered by the sword, the sword of Ali ibn Abi Talib in Badr and in Uhud? The brothers of his grandmother, Hind. The nephews of Abu Sufyan. His grandfathers and his uncles were killed by the sword of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Many people hate us for visiting the shrine of Imam al Hussein, but they can't say anything about Imam al Hussein, the grandson of the Prophet. To, it, it is just because of their hate towards his father, Amir al Mu'mineen. Just because his father is Ali ibn Abi Talib. Imam al Hussein, he used to tell them, Did I do anything to you? Did I steal money? Did I kill one of your tribe, one of your families? They tell him, no, no, not all of that. Bughdan minna li abik. It is because of our hate towards Ali ibn Abi Talib, your father. This is Imam al Hussein to us, my dear brothers and sisters. We should respect and honor the blood of Sayyid al Shahada. Why beat your chest? Imam al Hussein, his chest was stepped on by the horses in Karbala. You don't beat your chest for Imam al Hussein. Whatever you, we do to Imam al Hussein, commemorate, cry, shed tears. Why do this? Why do that? Imam al Hussein, what kind of sacrifice did he do? We just be our just simply. You call that kufur? You call that a form of showing the reputation of Islam in a bad way? Just simply doing latum for Sayyid al Shahada? These are the questions. And these are the arguments that we are facing, my dear brothers and sisters. It all goes back to Tawheed. It all goes back to the belief system in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the Prophet. They do not believe in infallibility. One of them told the Prophet, Inna rajula la yahjur. The man is hallucinating. Hasbuna kitab Allah on the Prophet. He speaks about the Prophet in that way, hallucinating. While Allah, the Lord of the universe, says about the Prophet Muhammad, Sallu alayhi bi ala aswatikum. Allah says about this man, Prophet Muhammad, Wa ma yantiqu anil hawa in huwa illa wahyun yuha. Whatever he says, Prophet Muhammad, whatever he says, his commands, his orders, when he says a hadith, it is all a revelation directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through Jibra'il. The man is hallucinating. It all goes back to that belief system, my dear brothers and sisters. The belief in Allah, the belief, the belief in the prophets and their infallibility in the imams and in the day of judgment when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts his leg in the fire. It all goes back to this belief, my dear brothers and sisters. They believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has hands and legs. So this is Imam al Hussein to us, my dear brothers and sisters. I don't want to take much of your time on, the, on a night like this. 1,383 years ago. Shimr ibn Dhul Joshan came to the camp of Sayyid al Shahada Abi Abdullah al Hussein. Carrying a letter from Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad. 
أن اقتلوا الحسين وأهل بيته وأصحابه Kill Hussein, his family, his brothers, his nephews, his babies, whoever is in the tent, and kill his companions. This is at night. Shimr comes closer to the tent. He calls, Aina Banu Ukhtina. Who are the, where are my nephews? Abul Fadl al Abbas goes and talks to him, and he gives. Protection for Abul Fadl al Abbas while Abul Fadl al Abbas refuses. Imam al Hussein orders Abul Fadl al Abbas to tell them, Let us delay the fight. Let us delay the battle. Right now it's at night. Tell them, I want to spend my last night not in partying, not in running away. I want to spend my last final night worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I want to spend my last night. One of the narrators says, كان لهم دوي كدوي الناح. The sound that was coming from the tent of Imam Al Hussein and his companions was as if like a, a sound coming from a beehive. Why is it a beehive? Because they were all saying Subhan Allah, Ma Sha Allah, Alhamdulillah. Between a, one in ruku, one in sujood, one doing. قنوت and praying to Allah سبحانه وتعالى ما بين راكع وساجد وقائم وقاعد. This was the camp of Imam Al Hussein, and the army of Yazid was busy celebrating. Alcoholic soldiers partying, dancing, while the camp of Imam Al Hussein was busy worshiping their Lord. After they were all murdered on the day of Ashura, the companions of Imam Al Hussein. My dear brothers and sisters, if you do not cry today, then when are you going to cry? This is a day of our remembrance to Imam Al Hussein. This is the best day today and tomorrow to remember and to shed tears for our master, Sayyid al Shuhada, Abi Abdullah Al Hussein, and to call Labbaik Ya Hussein. لبيك يا حسين لبيك يا حسين After they were all murdered the companions the family of Abi Abdullah Al Hussein they started fighting until the last one his brother Abu Al Fadl Al Abbas was killed and slaughtered Imam Al Hussein realizes that he is weak now he is left with no defender. He is left with no protector. He calls seven times. Allah hal min nasrin yansurna. Allah hal min mu'inin yu'inuna. Allah hal min dhabin yadubbu an harami rasulillah. Allah hal min muwahidin yakhaf Allah fina. Imam al Hussein realizes that there is no one to support him and to defend him and help him. He calls, Is there one to defend? Is there one to help? Is there one to support? No one answers. But we from here, South Jersey, we call لبيك يا حسين لبيك يا حسين لبيك يا حسين We are your supporters. We are your defenders. We are your soldiers. And the soldiers of your grandson, صاحب العصر والزمان. Imam Al Hussein now prepares to enter the battlefield alone. He goes and he bids them farewell. He greets his sister Zainab and his wives 
and his sister Umm Kulthum. He tries to bid them farewell. His daughter Sukaina comes to him, hugs him, and cries, shed some tears. She tells him, who will protect us after you, O oh, my father? Who will defend us? What will defend us from the enemies? They will kill us. They won't show us mercy. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam tells them, Allah khalifati alaykum, Allah hafidhukum wa nasirukum, wa huwa mawlakum fi dunyakum wa akhiratukum. Allah will protect you, Allah is your defender, Allah is your defender and supporter, Allah will take care of you, do not despair. Do not lose hope, for if you lose hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will be considered a kafir. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam right now is preparing to enter the battlefield. He realizes his weakness. He calls Allah hal min nasir, Allah hal min mu'een. Is there one to help? Is there one to defend the grandson of Muhammad? Imam Zain al Abidin gets out of the tent and he tries to enter the battle. He orders him to get back into the tent for the legacy of Prophet Muhammad will not continue if he is dead. Imam al Hussein right now bids his final farewell. Sayyida Zainab brings to him his only left baby, Ali al Azgar. She tells him, Take him, please fetch him some water, for there is no milk left in his mother. She cannot feed him. Look at his tongue, how dry it is. Just give him a drop of water. Imam al Hussein takes his son, Ali al Azgar, to the army and he carries him. He tells them, Ya ayyuhal qawm, in kana li dhanbun, fama dhanbun radhi. Everyone with me. إن كان لي ذنب فما ذنب الرضيع. Please fetch him some water. If you don't want to give me water, just take him. If I did something wrong, then what did the baby do? He's a six month year old. Please, he's a six. He's six months old. Take him and give him some water. If you don't want me to get near the water, come and take him from me. Give him some water. But what happened? Umar ibn Sa'd hears the calls of his soldiers calling some of them, say, give him water. He's just a baby. And some of them said, no, do not give him water. So there was a chaos in the army of Yazid. Umar ibn Sa'd orders the archer Harmalah to cut the chaos. He tells him, Iqta' niza' al qawm. Harmala tells him, A'armi al walid, a'armi al walid. Do you want me to hit? Do you want me to kill the father or the son? Umar ibn Sa'd tells him, Do you not see the bright neck of the child? Do you not see the bright neck of the baby? Ama tara bayad nahr al radi? Harmala shoots the baby with a three headed arrow. Ya mu'minin wa zayida. Imam al-Hussein sees his six-month-year 
six month old baby in his blood. He takes him back to the tent. So Kaina greets him. She tells him, did you give him water? For I want water because I am thirsty. Imam al Hussein gives him, gives her her brother and he is killed. And he tells her, Khudi haki, hadha akhaki madbuha wa zayda wa shahida wa madluma wa husayna. Everyone with me. Assalamu ala al Hussein wa ala alayhi ibn al Hussein wa ala awlad al Hussein. وعلى أصحاب الحسين. Please everyone stand on your feet. اللهم كن لوليك الحجة ابن الحسن. برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وصل اللهم على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين